So we're going to be looking at professional dress today for men and women. Basically, we're going to look at the most professional styles. We're going to look at the most accepted colors. We're going to look at the importance of alterations. We're going to look at the different types of shirts that will be accept acceptable. We're going to look at shoes. We'll look at accessories. We'll talk about grooming. And then we're going to go over some don'ts that you don't want to do uh, for as far as professional dress. So your image is almost as important as the content of your interviewing. Interviewers were surveyed and on average interviews last up to about an hour. And it only takes the interviewer six minutes to decide if you are hireable. You know, they say your smile and handshake are the first thing a potential employer see, but your clothes and your body language are probably a close second. So your image is very important in this process. So wearing a suit for women, it should be a clean, classic fit and not too trendy. So there is a big debate about pantsuits versus skirt suits. The more professional look is going to be a suit with a skirt. If you're serious about advancing your career, if you're an experienced worker, a skirt suit is going to be the, the way you want to lean. Dress professional and lean on the conservative side with dark colors. Skirt should be long enough not to distract when you sit down. The pleats should not pull open. It should turn easily around your body when you have it on. Uh, straight skirts should hang from the buttocks in a straight line and not curve under. It should not be form-fitting, in other words. It should end around the knee. You want no visible lines under the skirt. You want to stay away from having a high slit in the skirt, long, either in the front or on the side or in the back. And make sure your slip, if you wear a slip under the skirt, which we recommend, does not show. For men, there's basically three styles of jackets that you want to look at with suits. There's the two-button style you see on the left, there's the three-button style in the middle, and then there's the double-breasted on the right. The most traditional styles are, are these three. There are going to be several different cuts to these styles. There'll be a traditional cut, which will be formed to any body shape. There'll be an athletic fit suit that'll be a tighter cut in the waist and in the torso with a little bit wider at the shoulders and across the chest. There's an executive cut, which is pretty similar to a traditional cut. And then there'll be a European cut, which is the tightest and slimmest fitting suits of them all. The European cut is probably the least traditional of these, or the least professional of these cuts. Most of the suits, both men and women, they're going to be fully lined to the cuff in the sleeve, which means they'll have a different type of fabric. For men, if you are looking at a four button suit or any more than three buttons, then that's not an appropriate style for, for professional business dress, for interviews or for even at the job. Those particular styles, fancy collars, those are more after five wear, like for night clubbing, and that's not the image that you want to portray. You also want to remember, if you notice in the pictures, the button button on the jacket is, is left undone. And that's traditionally how it's worn when the, when the coat is closed, when you're standing up. When you're sitting down, you will unbutton the jacket. But when you're standing up and you have the jacket button, the bottom button will be left unbuttoned. As far as trousers, there's basically two styles. There's going to be a pleated trouser like on the left and then a flat front on the right. They will be lined to the knee, which is going to increase your comfort and the durability of the trouser. These trousers are going to fit differently than the pants you normally wear day to day. So, for instance, your jeans and your casual pants are going to fit differently. These are going to feel a bit fuller through the leg and through the thigh, and they should be worn at your waist, not down around on your hip bones. Now, as far as colors, these are the colors that you're going to stick with both men and women. These are very conservative, very neutral colors, so black, charcoal, navy blue. Now you can do a pattern in the suit, but it needs to be muted as much as possible. Nothing too loud as far as the suit itself. So men, if you are going out to get your first suit, then you probably would want to pick just a, a plain navy, charcoal, or black suit. Ladies, same thing. But if you wanted to have a suit with a little bit of a pattern in it, that would be okay. 
You want to stay away from what we call banker's gray, which is going to be a very light gray. You want to stay away from the earth tones such as tan, olive, taupe, and brown. You want to stay away from these colors for interviewing. Once you get the job, you can go ahead and invest in a suit with those colors, but for job interviewing, you want to stick with these basic muted colors. As far as fabrics, for women, you want to stick with lightweight wools, a wool crepe, or a silk suit. For men, 100% wool is going to be the way you want to go. Wool can be worn year-round. It's very breathable. It travels well. It's easy to care for and will pass a crumple test, which basically means if you crumple the fabric in your hands, when you let go, it'll go right back to its shape. I want to talk a minute about suit care. Most of these types of suits are going to be dry clean only, but you only want to do it a few times a year and only if possibly it gets stained. You do not want to clean it every time you wear it because then you will wear the suit out. The chemicals in the dry cleaning will break the fabric down and the suit will be of no good to you after a few cleanings. If it is only wrinkled, just have it pressed. You can take it to the dry cleaners and tell them just to press the suit. It will come back and it will look like brand new. You always want to use the curved hanger that comes with the suit in order for it to keep the shape that it comes with. Again, always unbutton the suit when you're sitting down. You want to take your jacket off when you're driving and hang it up or fold it and, and lay it in the seat, but you don't want to wear it while you're driving. When sitting, for men, you want to kind of pull your slacks up just a little bit so that it kind of reduces the stress on the fabric. And for a lot of suits, both men and women, your jacket pockets and your vents will be sewn shut. Now, as far as the pockets, you can go ahead and break that thread and, and undo those. But you definitely want to unbreak the thread for any vents, which is kind of like a slit in the back of the suit jacket. You want to go ahead and break that vent so that it will hang and drape correctly. Most of these things are done so that when the suit is being transported from the factory to where it's sold, it'll keep its shape but you don't have to leave the, butt, the pockets sewn up if you don't want to. Now let's talk about alterations. Most of the time you're going to be going out and buying these garments from what we call off the rag and they're going to fit up to a certain point. But alterations are very important. So you don't want to buy the size by fit. You, you should feel comfortable in the suit. So you want to be sure and address the fit around the torso, so across the chest and around the torso, gaping is not a good look. You want to make sure it's big enough through your midsection and through the chest area as well. Also you want to look at a jacket collar. It should closely follow the silhouette of your neck. There should be no gaping. So if you notice in the pictures, the one on the top, there's a roll in the neck. You know, you are going to need to have that tailored so that it does not do that when you wear the jacket. And then on the bottom picture on the right, there is a gap in between the collar of the shirt and the jacket. That gap should not be there when the suit is pulled, when the suit jacket is pulled on. Now, as far as the length of the sleeve, your sleeve jacket should touch your wrist bone. A traditional look is for your shirt cuff to extend beyond the uh, cuff of the jacket about a quarter to a half an inch below the sleeve. The length of the jacket will depend on your body proportions and the fashion trends, but it should cover your entire seat, so your bottom. Your, your jacket should extend below your bottom in the back. But the sleeves are going to come down to your wrist bone, and then when your arms are hanging at your side, the sleeve of your shirt is going to extend, your long sleeve shirt is going to extend about a quarter to a half an inch beyond that. Now as far as men's trousers, you're going to have some alterations as far as the bottom of the trouser, most uh, suits, they're going to come what they call unhemmed. They could extend upwards to 36 to 40 inches and just be rough cut at the bottom. The thing you want to look at is how much of a break, which as you see is kind of where the bottom of the trouser is going to hit your shoe. So full break is going to come down about two thirds of the way on your shoe and there will be a break in the fabric in the front. So if you notice in the picture, that is a full break with a cuff. You can also do a half break, which is only going to come down maybe a quarter to a half way down on your shoe, and so there will be less break in the fabric. And the picture that we're showing is a half break with no cuff. 
and then the last is no break at all. So it's going to come just to the top of your shoe and there'll be no break in the fabric. It'll come straight down. The no break is also called a flood trouser. So you want to be very careful with this when you're doing a no break since it just comes to the top of your shoe. It definitely needs to come to the top of the shoe and not show any sock when you're standing. A flood trouser is going to show some of your socks. Next thing we want to look at are uh, blouses and shirts. A blouse for women is going to be a lot like a tie. So you're going to have a little more leeway as far as color, as far as pattern, etc. <coughs> Excuse me. You want to choose natural fibers or a top quality blend such as silk, crepe, chalice, cotton, or linen. Muted colors are best, so you want to be careful about colors. Patterns need to be small and unobtrusive. So ladies, if you wear a shirt with a pattern, it needs to be you know, kind of small and unobtrusive. You want to stay away from loud prints and loud colors. A jewel neck and a high collars work best with most jackets. So as you see, most of the shirts that we're showing here are blouses for women have a collar, but you could use a jewel neck as well. The less flesh you've shown, the more powerful you look. So a two inches above your cleavage is considered conservative. You should be covered from just below the collarbone to just above the knee as far as your professional dress. You want to wear appropriate undergarments when wearing light colored blouse. Buttons should not pull across the chest. Long sleeves which reach to the wrist bone and stick out from under the cuff of the jacket between about a quarter to a half an inch. Sleeveless is okay under a jacket, but stay away from sleeveless if there is any chance you might take your jacket off. So if you wear a sleeveless shirt, ladies, under your suit jacket, that is fine. But if you plan on taking your jacket off, then you're going to need to wear a short or long sleeve shirt. The tail of the blouse should be longer than your hip bone so it can be tucked in. You do not want to wear a shirt untucked. That is not a professional look. A tailless blouse is considered casual wear, so stay away from them for, for interviews. Gentlemen, there are only two acceptable colors for interviewing, as you see on the screen. White, which is number one and going to be the best color. A secondary color, a distant second, is going to be blue. The color of the shirt should be lighter than your suit. A 100% cotton fabric is best. You want to send them to the cleaners to have them cleaned. You don't want to do it yourself. You're never going to get it as clean and as ironed as you want it. So send it to the cleaners, have them clean it, and then hang it. You want to wear a short sleeve t-shirt underneath your dress shirt. Wife beaters are verboten. Unacceptable. You can see those straps underneath the shirt, especially a white one, and it is not a good look. So just wear a short sleeve white t-shirt underneath your dress shirt. Now as far as the collar, we're showing several different collar styles here. A point collar, a uh, straight collar is going to be your most conservative style, but any of the styles that you see here are going to be just fine for the collar of the shirt. Your shirt should be smooth around the neck and allow an index finger to be slid into between your neck and the collar of the shirt all the way around. Okay. Finally, there is no such thing, gentlemen, as a short sleeve dress shirt. I'll repeat this again. There is no such thing as a short sleeve dress shirt. If you're a dressing business professional, whether you're interviewing or on the job, you must wear a long sleeve shirt. Finally, you want to avoid any stripes for a first interview. Basically, you'd want to stay away from any kind of patterned shirt for any type of interviewing that you might do. Once you get the job, then you have more leeway and you can invest in some stripes uh, some checks, etc. Next thing we want to talk about are shoes. For women, you want to wear a closed toed shoe that have been shined. Uh, never wear sandals or strappy heels. Avoid high or stiletto heels. You're looking at a heel up to about two and a half, maybe three inches. You want to be very selective if you think you might want to wear boots. Uh, they need to be conservative. Uh, you know, you can give boots a try. You know, give leather boots a go. They don't even have to be heeled. Uh, they're a classic style. So they'll last you more than one fashion cycle, and they transcend seasons. So you can wear boots. They just need to be conservative. 
the uh, stiletto high heel boots with the very thin heel, not a good look, not very business professional. As far as men, you're going to wear a lace-up shoe. This is your most professional look. You want to choose either a cap toe, split toe, or a plain blucher style shoe. Black or burgundy shoes can be worn with navy or charcoal suits. But with a black suit, you want to stick with black shoes. Your socks must match your suit pants and be long enough to cover your calf. Okay, let me repeat this. Your socks match your suit pants. Brown shoes are not recommended for interviewing. Again, an experienced worker, when you're on the job, you can invest in colors and styles, but for interviewing, brown is considered casual, and so you'd want to stay away from that. You want to make sure, men and women, that your shoes are shined, that the edging is not fading. You know, a magic marker can work wonders on this, a black Sharpie, etc., and that the laces are not broken or frayed. It is a common fact that interviewers view how well you treat your shoes as a sign that you have attention to detail. So that it, when you're at home and you're getting ready to go interview and you're looking at yourself, you look from the top of your head to the tips of your feet. And this is going to show the interviewer that you have an attention to detail. And finally, men, loafers are not acceptable dress shoes for interviewing. Now once you, again, if you're an experienced worker, once you get the job, you can wear loafer styles to work, more than likely. But for interviewing, you want to wear a lace-up style. Ladies, we're going to talk a minute about hose. I know that the current style is more laxed in this area as far as dress code at most companies where you don't have to wear hose. But for interviewing, it is required. You should wear hose when you're interviewing. You want to select hose that match your skin tone and the hose color should not bring attention to the leg area. You want to stay away from hose or tights with woven patterns or textures in them. Just plain skin tone hose will be fine. But you must wear them for interviewing. Sorry ladies. Next thing we're going to talk about is accessories. So for women, you want to follow a rule of seven for jewelry. So no more than seven pieces of jewelry. Um, this is going to include rings, bracelets, necklaces, earrings. Piling on jewelry, that is not a good look. It's nice when people make an effort with jewelry, but loud clinking bracelets can be a little distracting and irritating. So instead of piling on numerous bracelets, for instance, try one big chunky bracelet. It's a great way to make a statement without making a racket. Gentlemen, your main accessories are going to be your tie and your belt and possibly suspenders or braces if you wear those. Your tie needs to be 100% silk. That's going to be the best fabric. You want to use just a single knot. We've shown four ways here that you can tie the tie, but there are great videos on YouTube. We even have things at the Career Services website that you can watch that teach you how to tie a tie. Your tie should be darker than your shirt, and ideally it should repeat a color of your suit. So it should coordinate with your shirt and your suit. As far as your belt, it's going to need to match your shoes. And most of you are going to be wearing black shoes, so it should be a black belt. If you are going to wear a pocket square, it needs to complement your tie, not match your tie. So if you're thinking about buying one of those boxed sets that has a matching tie and pocket square, don't. You're making a big fashion faux pas. If you want to wear a pocket square, just get something that's going to coordinate with the suit and your tie. If you're going to wear braces or suspenders, that's fine. They need to coordinate with the outfit. You don't want anything that's going to match with the tie. So again, if you're thinking about picking up a box set of a tie and suspenders, don't do that. They should complement your shirt and suit. You want to stay away from novelty braces so if you see something with Charlie Brown on it, we're going to stay away from that. Maybe we can wear those after we get the job. But for interviewing and basically for professional dress, you're going to stay away from novelty suspenders. Clip-on suspenders are not acceptable. That is not professional dress. When you're buying a tailored suit, you can have them add suspender buttons to your pants. That is something they can do as part of your alterations. 
That way, if you want, want to wear suspenders with them, you can, or you could wear a belt. Next thing we're going to talk about is grooming for interviewing and for professional styles uh, as well. Uh, as far as interviewing women, you need to have a hairstyle that's going to keep your hair out of your face. Okay, you don't want to have a hairstyle that you constantly have to touch in order for them to see your face. Something simple and not attention grabbing is the best style to stick with. Men, you have a few more grooming issues besides your hair. You want to, as much as possible, be clean shaven. If you're going to have a beard or if you're going to have a goatee, it needs to be trimmed and tight to your face. So, for instance, a couple of the pictures, the one in the bottom left, that gentleman sporting his 5 o'clock shadow, that is not a good look. You want to, if that's what you're thinking about doing or how you do on an everyday basis, you're going to want to shave for an interview. You want to have a look similar to the one at the top of the right or to the goatee that's at the top of the left. Trimmed, neat, professional looking. Hairstyle the same way. If you, want to, if you have longer hair like the gentleman in the left, that is fine. But it needs to be either, if it's very long, clipped as a ponytail, but away from your face. Now, let's talk a little bit about makeup. If you really hate the idea of makeup, try using just one product, ladies. For example, lipstick, and then maybe adding other products later on. If you have more than 10 items, ladies, in your daily beauty regimen, you should pare that down. Try using only just a few items such as mascara, powder, a light foundation, and blush. This is a more professional look, and you'll be surprised about the looks. If you have questions, you're not very familiar with makeup, you want to list the help of a makeup counter expert before picking a shade and they can help you with different types of styles for makeup. Fragrance, ladies and gentlemen, ideally for interviewing, we actually recommend that you kind of stay away from it. For it once you get the job, the rule of thumb is less is more. It's better to wear none than to wear too much. You want to watch out for body odor, so be sure to bathe and use deodorant, especially when you're interviewing. Finally, the fingernails. Both men and women, you want to make sure they're cleaned and trimmed. Although you may like your nails long, there's definitely a limit to how far you can go in a professional environment, ladies. A simple style with either a clear finish or a muted color will convey the best image. When you're interviewing, typically a, a clear finish, a French manicure, that is actually going to be your best, most professional look. You can invest in colors uh, later on. But if you want to maintain a professional look, your nails need to be neat and trimmed. You don't even have to color them. Next thing we want to talk about are tattoos. No tattoos should be visible. You want to cover those tattoos up with clothing, band-aids, or makeup. That is going to be your most professional look for interviewing. Even most companies with dress codes will not allow you to have visible tattoos. So you're going to need to really think about if you want to have one of those, where you're going to have it and whether it will be visible because you may get a job and if they require no visible tattoos, it may be something that you might have to remove or you're going to definitely need to look into how you're going to cover it up. Finally, piercings. If you're interviewing, you want to take out all visible piercings, ladies and gentlemen. For ladies, you can still wear earrings. For gentlemen, if you wear earrings, you want to take those out. You may like them, but it can be offensive to, pe to other people. Ladies, you want to wear Basically, you know, conservative, one pair of visible studs, maybe a small dangle pair of earrings. But gentlemen, you don't want to wear any earrings for interviewing. And most dress codes for most professional companies, they're not going to allow you to wear your visible piercings on the job, including those in your tongue as well. There are a lot of great places that you can go to to find good, affordable business attire. My suggestion is to get out and dig in the racks. You can find great deals at resale shops. I have several places that I go to to look for uh, resale values and then take them and have them altered to fit your body. But these are some great places, and I'm sure you know some of your own, that you can go to and find great affordable business wear. Finally, we're going to talk about some don'ts. So for ladies, wedge and stiletto heels are not acceptable. 
You want to make sure your blouse is not too tight. Uh, you want to make sure short or high skirts, those are forbidden. Form-fitting skirts, form-fitting dresses, those are not professional. So you want to stay away from those styles. You don't want to wear patterned hose. And after five makeup is just for that, after five. So the looks that you see on the screen, these would not be appropriate for business professional, either interviewing or on the job. For men, mainly you want to stay away from the colors that are listed here, especially for interviewing. Now, once you get the job, you know, kind of you can go ahead and invest in suits in those colors. Shirts, you want to stay away from colors and patterns unless it is actually woven into the shirt. Your only two good colors are solid white, solid blue. Again, we want to talk about jackets with more than four buttons or a Mandarin style jacket, which is no collar. Those for gentlemen, those are not uh, business professional. And finally, as far as fabrics, both men and women, you want to stay away from polyester, cotton, and linen. These will not look good, especially if you're interviewing. Now, once you get the job, you could invest in a linen suit if you'd like, but it still does not. Linen and cotton, those are casual fabrics. They are not business professional fabrics. Another don't is that thinking that you don't need alterations. Ladies and gentlemen, you buy a suit off the rack, it's going to need to be altered to your particular body type. So don't feel like you don't need alterations. Finally, shoes, you want to stay away from loafers, gentlemen. And finally, grooming. Don't try a new hairstyle right before an interview. Uh, don't forget to bathe and use deodorant. Uh, you'd be surprised how often that happens. So that's why we mention it. So finally, in wrapping up, uh, it's better to be remembered for what you said during an interview than for what you wore. So if you dress professionally, you're going to come across as a, with a professional image. And what they will remember is what you said during the interview when they question you. So we want to thank you for attending today's webinar.